Hello, this is Real World Audio, and uh, I'm continuing with the, the Darling amplifier builds. Uh, I'm ki kind of ashamed to say that I've been pretty negligent on continuing uh, with the Darling variants, and the only reason for that is basically procrastination. So I'm sorry about that, but uh, here we go. And um, before I, I delve more into the differences between the... Uh, baby darling version and its pure darling version i like to say that both of these are basically a tribute to bob danielak uh, who was the creator of the darling uh, topology and uh, when he created it he used uh, parts that were just in his uh, in his toolbox and he was curious uh, just did it as a joke to come up with a schematics uh, and and with uh, with an amplifier uh, that uses a minimal parts count and uh, and basically he he just uh, used whatever he had at his disposal. But I have to add that he did try ev a really wide variety of driver tubes so so he did not just uh, randomly pick up the 6J4 as a driver for the Darling amp he tried about a dozen driver tubes and and with the 6J4 uh it uh, the the 1626 power tube is just synergizes wonderfully so they are a synergistic match and I've been emphasizing this on my previous videos that the most important, I would say the most crucial part of every amplifier is the parts synergy. And, and, and this is true not just for tube amplifiers, for basically every stereo component. That uh, topology is one thing, uh, but the parts have to complement each other and and this is uh, uh, very obvious in the case of vacuum tubes and and that's why uh, all of us who are into audio we really need this sort of experience basis to know which tubes go well with which tubes because it's not just like i want to build a 300b amp or a 2a3 amp or 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 a 1626 amp uh, but you have to know uh, what are those uh, input and driver tube combinations that will make it work. So circling back to my darlings, when uh, I posted the baby darling uh, schematics and baby darling build, that's basically mirroring the same uh, darling amplifier that Bob Danielak created. So it's almost exactly the same thing, except using uh, higher quality parts. So Bob just used whatever was in his uh, toolbox and uh, I am I gave you a recipe of... Uh, I'm not saying what's the best parts quality available there because then it would be a very expensive build but uh, something uh, that is of a very high parts quality and uh, and you see that sort of parts quality uh, and and lineup and and attention to detail uh, and part selection only in uh, very expensive uh, vacuum tube amplifiers today. So if you choose to build a baby darling amp uh, with those parts that I have recommended, you will have a very high quality amplifier. And uh, also, I would like to reiterate it again that uh, the Darling amplifier is uh, less than one watt output per channel. And although when you will be listening to it and you listen to quiet volume or normal volume, you will never miss uh, more watts. You will never need more watts. But if you want to rock on a like a Led Zeppelin concert to bring down the house, it will not happen. Uh, and uh, you want to drive uh, wheels on speakers to, uh, to, for rock concerts, that will not happen either. So if you want to have uh, that sort of experience in your home, then I really recommend to keep 
whatever high power amplifier you get and don't throw it away and keep the Darling amplifier as your main listening amplifier or maybe your secondary amplifier when you want to get some really uh, deep and uh, uh, deep connection to the music. Uh, and, and when you want to party on, then just use your other high power amplifier. And now let's talk about the Pure Darling, which is the uh, high quality version of the Baby Darling. So the Baby Darling itself is pretty high quality, but the Pure Darling is, uh, is that high quality when you look at the uh, bespoke tube amplifier, like custom made ones and, 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 and of the highest quality. Now this is what you will be getting. And, and, um, and here I'm listing what are the differences between them and then we'll go into the part selection. So basically the most Im one of the most important parts changes is the high quality coupling capacitor. So, uh, Although for the uh, Baby Darling, I also suggested you can use a higher quality cap uh, to, to couple the tube tubes together, but here uh, you do need it. If you don't use a high quality coupling capacitor, then uh, it, you will be missing most of the point of the amplifier build. And, and the second one is that we will be using a separate cathode resistors and capacitors for every single tube because in the Baby Darling, we used Bob Danielak's original schematics where he uh, put both of them together. And normally, that's a solution that you see in budget amplifiers uh, or, or you saw them in the budget amps of the 70s, 80s. Uh, and, and, and one way to improve on them is to separate the cathode resistors and, of course, uh, add separate capacitors with them as well. But uh, why I recommended that common cathode resistor for both uh, input and uh, power tube, because that's how Bob Daniel used it. And uh, sadly, I never heard his uh, original version, but people who heard it, everyone uh, agreed that his original version sounded the most musical of any other Darling variety. However, based on my personal experience, if you go with separate cathode resistors, you will get uh, better imaging and better clarity. So what I recommend is to build the pure Darling with separate cathode resistors uh, and capacitors. And, and what you can do is uh, connect the two cathodes with a wire and a switch. So you can switch between using your amplifier in a separate cathode mode or common cathode mode. And then you can hear it for yourself, which is the one you prefer. I have a, a, a very, very strong hunch. And my very, very strong hunch tells me that uh, depending on what music you listen to, uh, you will have different preferences between separate cathode and common cathode. And, uh, and, and my other hunch will tell you that 80% of your music listening will be done probably with the separate cathode uh, resistors and, and, and bypass capacitors. But sometimes if you uh, switch them together, uh, for example, if you have a common cathode uh, resistor, then that will, I would say, uh, quite surely, almost with 100% accuracy, if you listen to mono recordings, that's the way to go. Switch them to common mode. Uh, another aspect of the Pure Darling is big output transformer. So in, in the Baby Darling, uh, I also recommended the budget uh, output transformers from Edcore and Hammond. Or, or any other manufacturer you can find as long as it's between uh, 5 and 7K primary. Now we are going for, I'm recommending nothing less than a 20 watt size output transformer. And even though we are getting one watt or less than one watt output power, 
I recommend 20 watt or bigger iron because this way you will hear sound where there is no transformer uh, limiting. Because even though the transformer is uh, rated to 20 watts, if you pump it uh, with the 20 watts of output power, you will see already a noticeable transformer compression. And if you use a 20 watt iron for a 0.7 watt peak signal, then you will see zero transformer compression. I, sorry, you will hear zero transformer compression. And this is uh, my personal contribution to the world of audio uh, that I've been experimenting with during these past couple of years is that when you go for that uh, extreme headroom in a uh, transformer wattage, then that completely transforms the character of the amplifier and uh, that's why in the actual output transformer list, I, I list for you uh, four transformers. These top two ones are actually borderline budget transformers. They are still in the hundred plus dollar per iron category. But both, uh, so, so the Ed core is a 25 watt core and the Hammond is a 30 watt rated core but they weigh the same, they both weigh uh, 10 pounds. Actually, every transformer here that I listed weighs about uh, 9, 10 pounds. So they have the same wattage core and why they are called uh, 30 watt or 25 watt, that's because depending on how you gap them, if you have a smaller gap, then you are getting higher inductance uh, but you are getting also a lower wattage and and depending on which transformer manufacturer company so clearly Hammond uh, rated the same iron the same weight iron at 30 watt that Ed Corve uh, rated at 25 I would say for the Hammond uh, do not use it for more than 25 watts if you want to uh, because they have the exact same magnetic capacity as they use the same kind of lamination. But in our case, this is totally irrelevant. What matters is that both weigh 10 pounds or about four and a half kilos each, and they are all massively oversized for 0 0.7 watt peak output power. And, uh, and that's why I included these two inferior transformers for a pure darling build. If you are on a tight budget, then you can still build this amplifier using the Adcore Iron. The only drawback that it's available in two varieties, 8 ohm or 6 ohm and nothing more. And right now I'm stopping this video because uh, it shows that my battery is going low and I want to be able to get the message out for you. So now we have, uh, we are finishing with the output transformer choice and we will continue from here. Let's tune in later. Thank you everyone for uh, being interested in this amplifier. Bye-bye. Uh,